The illegal wildlife trade is just enormous in scale. It's the fourth largest illegal trade after things like guns and arms and uh, drugs. It starts with perhaps a local poacher in a protected area in Africa who's just trying to feed his family and then it goes through traders in big cities in Africa right the way through um, to people in Southeast Asia who are then selling it and then finally it ends up in the hands of a consumer who may have no idea where the thing first started. We're bringing in expertise that hasn't really come into conservation before from social policy, from public health, also bringing in computer science and cyber security. Other people we're bringing in are from marketing because particularly on the luxury goods side, you really need to understand how people relate to brands and to different kinds of luxury good in order to be able to change the way in which they relate to them. Buying products from the illegal wildlife trade has become a lot easier for people over the last 10 years or so. And from those countries which have particular interests in these products, particularly in Southeast Asia, um, wealth is increasing at an enormous rate. Traditionally, uh, conservationists have really focused on trying to um, reduce supply, to protect animals. What we're thinking about is kind of the other side of that coin, of how can you reduce demand for these sorts of products? Because if you can do that, the supply side of things will take care of itself. Changing behaviour on a big scale is tricky. Um, and if we think back to what's worked in public health, for instance, how smoking behaviour has changed, people who've watched Mad Men uh, on TV and have seen and sometimes been quite surprised by the amount of smoking and that's back in the 19 or set in the 1960s mainly. And so attitudes around smoking and behaviour around smoking has all changed immeasurably over that period. It does appear that in many cases the illegal wildlife trade is starting to move online. In some senses it can be easier to investigate online crime because the, there tends to be an audit trail. For the dark net it can be a lot harder um, because the systems are designed to be anonymous and hard to break into. The ability of the internet to change the way that people think and carry out transactions and carry out social interactions is, is huge. There's a whole generation of people now who are growing up with the internet as the place to do business and to interact socially and to receive and promote opinions about what is right and wrong in society. If we can take advantage of that potential to put across the message that the illegal wildlife trade is not something that we can have in a, in a modern world, um, there's a potential to do a great deal of good. There's always cause for optimism in conservation. We hear a lot about the devastation that the wildlife trade causes, and particularly there's been huge concern that there might actually be extinctions of some of our charismatic species. But there are real beacons of hope where people are making a difference. So my hope for this program is that we can use the convening power that we have as an institution at Oxford University to solve a real world problem while also doing exciting science at the cutting edge.